Right, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to how you might use Desmos to preview equations that you're going to use in uh, full control. So I've created two uh, Desmos uh, kind of sets of, of equations. So on the left here, you can see all the uh, equations that I've programmed. And basically the first one is for Cartesian coordinates and the other one is for polar coordinates. And you can get them by just going to those uh, that URL that you can see on screen now for polar coordinates and this URL for... Uh, Cartesian coordinates. So in the Cartesian one, we've got an x equation, a y equation, and then to actually plot it on screen here, there's this equation at the bottom that's putting them together. Uh, and that equation at the bottom, we can change the values. So it's currently set to go from 0 to 1 for t. If I set it to go like so, to 0 0.5, you'll see now we've only got half the um, half the length in x. And then if I set it to 0 0.25, we're only going to go a quarter of the way uh, and so forth. So if I set that back to 1, that is the, the same as the t value you use in uh, x in the full control. And these equations for x and y up here and here are in the um, uh, in, in terms of this t value. They've also got these these parameters. So here we've got x1 and we've got y1 and y2. So if I change those, that will change the um, the result of that x equation. And then same for the, the y equations. So one thing you might want to do is change the uh, parameters as you're going uh, through through the print. In which case you could make one of these a function of uh, kind of z val. So if on this equation, instead of just having this uh, term on the right, which is fluctuating it from, instead of being a straight line to being this wave, if I had that as a, a function of, of Z value, I can just add, an add a uh, parameter here, Z val. Um, if I set this to be divided by 10, Then now I can use this z value parameter, which I've got down here, um, and I could uh, make that move according to the, the amount that that z value is. So what this is kind of representing here is as z value goes from a value of 0 to 10, that's what we've got written here. That represents our height in, um, in millimeters, I guess. But yeah, so that will be our, our value that in the G code, you've got your, your z value. So that's going from 0 to 10. It's multiplying this right hand section by that number. Um, and then I, I've divided it by 10. So that at a height of 10, it's multiplying it by one. Um, and that means, you know, as we're going up through the print and our Z value is increasing from zero to 10, our geometry is going to change in that way. And um, so that's just, you know, I've chosen the Z val there because that is a term that full control understands, but you could, uh, these are the parameters you could just use as, uh, parameters as you like. One thing to watch out for, if in Excel you name a parameter as x1, then that won't be allowed because there's already a, a cell called x1. So if you write x1, it will refer to the cell x1. So you have to use a, a different type of name, number, naming convention. So then the same thing for the polar one. We've now got an angle formula as a function of t, radius formula as a function of t, and they're being put together. Again, we can um, edit these parameters that are in those equations. So if you press the little play button in, in Desmos, it will animate that. So that's changing the parameter R1, which is here, which is basically our, our radius of our, um, of our curve. And then on the right hand side, we've got this is our, our fluctuating radius. So if I just set this one to stop and then start varying the, the next one, how much it fluctuates by is dependent on this R2. It starts at zero and then increases. So again, you might have this fluctuate as you're moving up through a model or something, or as you're moving across a model or anything as you like. And then in this case, I've got a um, parameter here, which changes the number of points. So in some of the parametric files, I've 
uh, shared a uh, given an option to say how many star points you want for um, a star shaped geometry and that's th this value here which is um, just a, a number that's going inside the cos formula uh, so that's really it you know you can open these and start playing with the formulas putting in your own own parameters or writing your own formulas and then this is a really quick way to preview them and and think how they might change uh, as you're uh, moving across a model based on um, Z value or the number of repeats or something like this. Um, and once you've you've checked it here, you basically just write it in this same format in Excel, obviously with the um, correct use of, of brackets and stuff.